Hello and welcome to the Friday, July 7th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Jesse today wrote an interesting diary comparing the locks from different IDSs. These IDSs were placed in front of Jesse's D-Shield honeypot and interesting to see what attacks are being seen, are not being seen and most of all how they are being categorized. Some of the IDSs he compared here, mostly Palo Alto and Suricata, give you more detail as to what the potential attack could be versus others. Jesse also used full PCAP locks in order to make an ultimate then manual decision for some of these attacks to see essentially which IDS is better for more details. Well, uh, see Jesse's uh, diary. Sort of interesting that the uh, top two attack groups actually for Suricata are, well, our D-Shield block list, which uh, probably is uh, researchers. Uh, they often show up in our block list. And then, of course, things like SSH scans. A little bit surprised the terminal server scans show up at number four or number two if you uh, remove the two D-Shield block list that, uh, issues that are uh, being listed here. And CISA is warning that the latest version of the TrueBot malware is taking advantage of a vulnerability in Netrix Auditor. This vulnerability is not new. It has been patched for about a year now. June 6, 2022 is when the patch was released. Bishop Fox has a good write-up on the particular vulnerability. It's a deserialization issue, so exploitation is a relatively straightforward. It does listen on TCP port 9004. So do a quick scan of your network, see if anything is listening on port 9004. Not sure how popular this particular application is, but apparently popular enough for throughput bot to sort of deviate from its normal pattern. It's usually just going for phishing emails. Well, and now they're actually actively scanning for a network's uh, auditor. And then we got an interesting Linux uh, privilege escalation vulnerability. Uh, this one has been named StackRot. And well, the name is derived from the fact that this vulnerability is due to how the Linux kernel manages stack memory. The problem here is that an unprivileged user can trigger essentially the swapping out of memory areas and then replace memory of a more privileged process, which then leads to the privilege escalation. Exploitation appears to be challenging according to the initial disclosure. Patches should become available if they aren't already available for your distribution. Don't think that's something that you need to extremely expedite, but just, of course, you now keep your Linux kernels up to date. And I believe last week I mentioned a vulnerability that allows attackers to bypass some of the restrictions Microsoft Teams puts in place for, to protect users from attachments sent from outside their organization. Now, Microsoft does not consider this sort of an actual vulnerability. They're considering it more social engineering. Certainly somewhat true that they're saying that. But then again, without this particular vulnerability, it wouldn't be possible for an outsider to send an attachment to a particular organization. We now also have an exploit tool that makes exploitation of this vulnerability easier. Teams Fisher, this I think certainly makes this a more urgent issue. Definitely do educate your users that they have to be careful when they receive attachments from outside the organization. It should still be obvious that these attachments are not sent from an internal user. So it's a little bit like with email where anybody can send you an attachment. It may have a banner. Many companies do that. That is to show that a particular email does originate from outside the company. That's similar the way Teams works. And then we do have a moderate vulnerability it was fixed in VMware SD-WAN. 
Not quite sure why it's just rated with a CVSS score of 5.3. It is an authentication bypass. I guess uh, the actual effect isn't uh, really all that severe. So uh, that may cause them to reduce the CVSS score here somewhat. An unauthenticated attacker can download the diagnostic bundle of the application under VMware SD-WAN management. That's uh, what uh, VMware says. I do think uh, those diagnostic bundles can be quite sensitive, but uh, not really that super uh, familiar with them. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks and for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Remember, it will be sans fire. So maybe I'll see some of you at the conference. There will be the keynote again on Tuesday evening. Thanks and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.